All right, Peter, going live on video. Stand by for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, I am bringing on yet, once again, another new guru for you. And I'm really excited about where we're going to go with this show, but I'm just going to give you that as a teaser because we're going to talk about things we've talked about before on the show around toxicity of your body. I'm just going to give you that hint and that's it. So let me give you a little background on this gentleman. Okay. He discovered his mission in life 15 years ago. How many people wish they actually would have figured that out as well? But anyway, his history has shown us sometimes the most profound life-changing events come during times of turmoil. Well, after a routine checkup, he learned his health was far from perfect and some drastic changes were needed. And if he wanted to be around to meet his grandkids, he had to take this seriously. So some immediate changes were put into effect for his future. He, once he pictured, was, is in danger of crumbling away. I mean, that's pretty scary, guys. Like, your future could literally crumble away if you don't take this stuff seriously. So that was all he needed to hear. So he took that seriously, decided to take his health back into his own hands. And I'll leave it at that because there's so much more to this bio we're going to get into today. So without further ado, Peter Greenlaw, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much for having me. And for our listeners, we'll be doing some screen sharing like we always do for our YouTube followers, but make sure you check him out. It is his name, petergreenlaw.com, but also his secondary site, we'll do some sharing today too about the Greenlaw Report, and we'll get into some of that today as well. So I'm really excited about this show, sir. Uh, a shout out to my buddy, Glenn Nozak, for hooking us up, and, uh, but let's get into it. Uh, you have a huge bio. You have a great backstory. I wanted to give a teaser, but I really wanted to give you the honor of backfilling that in because it's your story. So why did you take health? Because obviously that's the theme of the show today, to such a serious level. Well, like you said, when my doctor said, you're not going to see, you're not, you're, uh, if you don't do something drastically different today, when you walk out of here, you will not see your grandkids. Um, the numbers were my cholesterol was 400. My heart attack was zero to 100 was 85 and I was 40 pounds overweight. Mm. And of course, he told me diet, exercise, and prescription drugs, which I did faithfully for a couple months. I lost eight pounds in two months, pound a week on a diet, pretty typical, but mm. my cholesterol only came down 20 points. Mm. So I couldn't, I was exercising, I'm just, uh, I live in Colorado. I was on the University of Colorado ski team. I tried out for the Olympics. So at one point, I was a world-class athlete. So when he said exercise, I figured this, you know, I'm going to do it seven days a week. And I was on 1,200 calories a day. I did everything you're supposed to do. But for me, it didn't work. So a friend of mine who played professional football for the Oakland Raiders turned me on to the concept of toxins and detoxification 15 years ago. And it literally changed my life in like a couple of days. I went on this July 3rd, this, this nutritional technology, which was, it really is a nutritional fast. And I'll explain that as we go on today. Mm -hmm. But the short version is I lost in 48 hours, eight pounds, the same amount of pounds that it had taken me two months to lose. I lost mm -hmm. 20 pounds in 18 days, 30 pounds in a month, 40 pounds in six weeks, eight inches off my waist, went back for my physical uh, scheduled follow-up. The doctor comes around and puts my chart down this time and goes, my gosh, Peter, how much of this statin are you taking? I said, doc, I haven't taken it in two months. He said, we need to retest you. I said, why? Why? Because my cholesterol went from 400 to 130. My heart attack was from 85 to 15. I lost 40 pounds in about seven or eight weeks. And then another friend of mine, a gastroenterologist, who I hadn't seen in a couple of months, saw me and said, my gosh, Peter, are you sick? What happened? You know, because <laughs> you lose all that weight. People, they, they, you know, they think you got the big C. That's a, that's a legit weight loss very quickly. So that might freak the traditional people out. Or I don't like to right. well, I'm going to explain that because this is certainly not a diet. It's not intended to be a diet. It happens to be a side effect of the what I've discovered in my 15 years of research. Basically, my first book was called, I've written four books, Why Diets Are Failing Us. came out in 2010, and I'll get into that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But anyway, through a series of circumstances, I met the pharmaceutical chemist or the nutraceutical chemist that had invented this, and he said, we need a spokesperson. Because um, I told him my story, and he was all excited, and he said, uh, and I said, well, I'm very flattered. One problem. He said, what's that? I said, I don't even know what a calorie is. He said, I'll teach. Seriously. Wait, can, can we pause on that? I've actually yeah. had multiple doctors on this show define that. Uh, one of the most simplest ways I've said it to some people, it's a unit of heat measurement. But would you like to expand on that with your knowledge? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the thing in all my seminars. I always say people, you know, how many people have been here on a diet? Would you agree that being on a diet is some form of counting calories? They all go, yes. And I said, okay, well, what's a calorie? A calorie is simply, it's not a physical thing. And your body can't measure calories. You can only measure calories in a, in a laboratory. All a calorie is the amount of heat it takes to, to raise 
uh, one gram of water, one degree Celsius. That's it. It's a, it's just a measurement. Thank and yet, you so all much. These diet, what they've missed. Okay. I coined the term, the enemy is not calories, it's toxins. And instead of counting calories, we should make every calorie count. And that's what I've discovered over 15 years. And I've worked with some of the, I mean, the top, top oncologists, molecular biologists, geneticists in the world, and everything I'm going to share with your audience today, none of it's my opinion. It hmm. all comes from them. All four of my books I've written with medical doctors, MD. No, and, you're, you're a vehicle. You're, you're taking their knowledge yeah, and giving absolutely. it out to like we're doing with a podcast right now. Exactly. Because they call me the researcher of researchers, you know, and I say, look, I'm not the expert. But I became an expert on the experts, and it's my responsibility to bring their voice to the world. My only job really is to make the world aware of what's available. I'm not trying to convince people of anything. I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm there simply to educate them. And it all started with my story and my result. And I just became neurotically curious. I mean, I didn't know anything about, you know, genetics or molecular biology or how the body worked. I mean, I knew we had a brain and, and, and a heart and lungs, and that was about it pancreas, hypothalamus, lymphos. What, what the heck do you need that for? You know, how, how does the pancreas work? Why do you even need a pancreas, right? Well, well I, I mean, I, I, it's funny because I didn't go through as much weight loss as you. But, I mean, people talk about, oh, well, it's, uh, I don't understand when, when they level off and, and drop off and then they all of a sudden lose weight again. Like, people don't understand the impacts on hormone levels and everything. Like, there's so much more, so many more layers. Well, let's get into that right now, okay? Yeah. Because I got tremendous criticism when my first book came out. They said, well, you know, always talking about if you reduce calories, obviously you're going to lose weight. 1,000% a lie. So let me read. Thank you very much. I'm going to share that real quick, actually, too. So there it is. Why diets are failing us. Right. And you got a ton of criticism on this? Yeah. Well, I got some criticism, okay? But let me read you a UCLA study. This is not Peter Greenlaw. This is a study that was compiled of 31 studies, 19,000 people over five years. Here, the headline of the study is, Dieting Does Not Work, UCLA Researchers Report. Will you lose weight and keep it off on a diet? No, probably not. UCLA researchers report in the April issue of American Psychologist. You can initially lose 5 to 10 uh, percent of your body weight and any number of diets, but then the weight comes back. What they said, what happens to people on diet in the long run? They say the, not only does the weight come back, but their ability to lose weight is, is, is hampered. It goes down because you lower your body's ability to burn calories. It's called your basal metabolic rate. And what people don't understand, it's not the hour you work out every day that determines what your weight is. It's the other 23 hours. And what they did in this study, they said, if you want to gain weight, 100% go on a diet. They had a control group that didn't go on a diet. They had another one that did. And the people that didn't diet were better off in the long run than the people that had never dieted before because of the negative impact of reduced calories which also reduces nutrients. And what does the body do? It goes in starvation mode and it stores fat. That is a fact. I, the- I love what you're hitting on right now. Nutrient density, for example. I love exactly. those two key words. People, yep. are like, like, people see what I eat. And like right. how, like I am, I'm six foot four. Mm-hmm. I'm 100, I, I fluctuate between 190 and 195. That's my sweet spot. I'm 40 years old. I, I'm training for a CrossFit competition again right now. I, uh, FYI, you mentioned skiing. I've been a USSA ski race coach for youth for 11 years. So fellow ski lover like yourself, I mountain bike, I road bike, I do century rides on my road bike. I used to live in Colorado like you. Trust me, man, I'm the health and fitness nut. And the one thing I've learned over the years too is that if you're eating nutrient dense food and the right food, that's important. But then I, as I hinted before we started this show, I didn't understand toxicity until probably starting in 2010. And I didn't have the weight loss and the major health reports that you had. But for me, just to help you and I connect for our listeners was, I just finished wild and firefighting that first year when I took that break from the business world, right? right? And I said, okay, I didn't know what accumulated exhaustion was. And I was eating, these are fire camps, right? These are federally funded. You're talking about MREs, like the military rations, right. full of preservatives. Of course. There's, no, there's no organic or grass-fed anything at these food well, camps. Promise, there, we'll get, we'll get uh, into that in just a second. Now, hopefully, yeah. I don't mean to make you mad, but I probably will, okay? Go ahead. Now, I, I get fired up. That's why we have fire in our logo. Okay, watch this. <laughs> I'm going to read from another study that says, the science is in. Exercise won't help you lose weight. We've been True. conditioned to think of exercise as a key ingredient, perhaps the most important ingredient of any weight loss effort. 
you know the drill. Join the gym on January 1 if you want to reach your New Year's weight loss goal. But in truth, the evidence has been accumulating for years that exercise, while great for health, isn't actually all that important for weight loss. Mm -hmm. They go on to say, this is unbelievable. It's generally accepted that for most people, the basal metabolic rate, that rate I told you that you burn calories at rest, accounts for 60 to 80% of the total energy expenditure. Digesting food accounts for only 10%. The implication here is that while food intake accounts for 100% of the energy that goes into the body, exercise burns less than 10% of it. And then they go on to say this is very interesting. In a hypothetical 200-pound man added 60 minutes of medium intensity running four days per week while keeping his calorie intake the same, and he did this for 30 years, he'd lose five pounds. How's that, Fred? I, I completely that, agree with you. And you know why I agree with you? I have a personal trainer. I worked out today. I'm in Denver, right? Like you. But if you think that exercise is a strategy, and here's, of course, what happens. People exercise, and they think, well, it gives them a license. Oh, I can eat more. I'm going to have a bagel. And the thing that matters the most is the 23 hours when you're not working out. And, and my a, a shameless plug for me, my second and third books, and I don't know if you've ever published a book or you're familiar with publishing. I'm working on one. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing- You're way you ahead of me. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing you don't want to get is a copyright. Relatively easy to get. What's almost impossible to get, unless you have something so unique, especially in this field, is um, uh, a, 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 that's it, the Tito syndrome. Mm. And I actually got a trademark by the U.S. Patent Office for discovering this new medical syndrome. You've probably heard of uh, Metabox syndrome or syndrome X. Well, TDOS, what does it stand for? Toxicity, nutritional deficiency, being overweight and stress. And what made it a syndrome is that those four interconnect and undermine any hope you have to maximize your quality of life potential. Now, you're working out, you're doing everything. And I'll say something again. I hope I make you mad. You don't even understand how bad you feel until you realize how good you could feel. At mm -hmm. best, with all your workouts, eating organic, doing everything, uh, if 100% is nirvana, the, I'm going to prove to you before this call's over that at the most, you're at 30%. At most, you're at 30%. Doing everything you're doing, you think's right. I got your back because it, it's, it's like, like I, have, I don't have your level of, of, of research, but I've obviously become more research intense just before I even launched the podcast, but this has definitely helped with that. And a good friend of mine will back you up. He's a trainer his entire life, lives out in LA. He's actually married to one of the original James Bond, like model women. And yeah. he, he grew up in New Orleans, man, like in the swamps, right? Mm -hmm. But he studied at Tulane University. So he got to study medical, medical courses, but as right. a personal trainer. So he's, he's a little bit further ahead than most. He's famous for, he is the trainer that Hollywood hires to transform people. And he gets on stage and he speaks now. He also earned a trademark. He trademarked the statement for NSNG, which his big advocation, you can, we'll probably talk about this too, is no sugar, no grains, right? Cutting the excess, right? I'm a big supporter of this actually, because he said, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, on stage, he'll say this. He's like, exercise is a poor way to lose weight. He said, love it. So he's fully behind you and he doesn't have anywhere near the research you have. This is the thing. He's like, guess what? He's like, I now tell everybody because people think he's got some kind of secret. He's like, no. He said, he's like, those are the two things that I do in most of my people. Why? Because then obviously the side effects that he, because he, he's got a very successful podcast. I'll try to get you guys connected. He runs Fitness Confidential. Uh, that's actually the name of his book because he's a cancer survivor. So he had cancer and he's surviving it. And he's a figure cyclist, fitness nut, right? Trainer his whole life. He tells everybody, guys, like exercise does not fix the problem. That obviously helps with your heart and everything else, but. For cardiovascular and for overall yeah. health. He said, but to back 100%. you up, TDOS, right there, stress. Here's another little key word. I'd love to help you define this. Cortisol. How about cortisol levels? I think that's well, a part of TDOS, right? All right? But let's go backwards because it's important that we go in sequence, okay? Yes, so please. TDOS stands for toxicity. So let's talk. First of all, do you believe we're living in a toxic world? Uh, yeah, it's so kind of excessive. I grew up on a farm as a kid. It has okay, changed so a lot. Let's just talk about the basics, water, air, and food, mm -hmm. let alone cosmetics and toothpaste and all the other kind of things and the dry cleaning on my suit I'm wearing today. Well, what we now know is that toxicity, let's just talk about air. 
in Los Angeles, in Denver, in Boston, in Pittsburgh, in Miami, on a day when it's overcast. First of all, we need 22, great oxygen to be about 22%. In Colorado, it's less because of the altitude. Yeah. But in Pennsylvania, it's going to be 22% in your room if it's perfect. But on an overcast, polluted day, they've measured the percentage of oxygen in many cities across America. It's dropping to 16%. 16. Well, uh, they, is that the same in suburban areas too, or no? Yeah, pretty bit. much. Yeah. Wow. So, so um, at 5%, we'd all die. No, you can't exist at 5% oxygen. So I was in China. I spoke in China a few years ago. And I was in Hong Kong on a day when I woke up in my hotel, I looked out the window, I couldn't see across the street. They measured the percentage of oxygen in the air that day in Hong Kong. It was 10%. That's scary. And those chemicals from the coal-fired power plants in India and China, the mercury, the cadmium, the arsenic, you're breathing them right now in Pennsylvania. There's no place on earth that's safe from this air pollution that we have. Now let's it's, called, it's called the jet stream. It takes it everywhere. Exactly. But let's go one step farther water okay they just concluded a study on 44,000 municipal water supplies okay from the taps water supply on average they found out of 44,000 the average was between four and 600 toxic chemicals in drinking water mercury iodine herbicides pesticides wobuse, pharmaceuticals flavic, pharmaceuticals okay now one of the things most people don't understand one of the dangers of drinking uh, water is chlorine. Guess what chlorine does? It destroys your gut bacteria, the very immune system that we have. And Thank yet you. I, for 40 or $50, they can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy a water filter. I don't sell them. I don't have anything to do with it, but there's a simple solution. But let me give you three statistics not to scare your listeners to death, okay? Of three babies born in the United States today, one in three will become a diabetic American Diabetes Association. I've had the privilege of speaking at Autism One in 2014 and 2015, one of the biggest autism conferences in the world. I'm they familiar with it. Because every autistic child has severe gut issues, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, what we know is that in 1990, they estimate one in 10,000 kids were autistic. This year, it's one in 62. And many projections say in 10 years, it's gonna be one in 30. That will bankrupt the entire world. But oh, here's, the one, here's the one that relates to water. In 1991, in 15, women got breast cancer. This year, it's one in eight. In 10 years, American Cancer Society projects, if it continues, it'll be one in three. And they believe a contributing factor to this, a contributing factor is chlorine. Okay, now here's why. In our body, we have these protective molecules. The mo one of the most important ones is iodine, deposited in the thyroid, in breast tissue, and the reproductive organs of men and women. When you take a chlorine shower, the chlorine enters the body and binds itself to iodine and limits the body's ability to use iodine. Iodine's mm -hmm. banned in Japan, it's banned in Europe. I mean, my God, it was a nerve gas in the First World War. And you're bathing in it, you're showering in it every day, and you absorb water eight to 10 times faster through your skin than you do through drinking. So the drinking water, first of all, it's destroying your gut, and secondly, it could be a leading contributor to at least breaking down our immune system ability to fight off things like cancer. All the cancer rates are exploding. Okay. I mean, we've got, you know, they keep talking about, you realize that in cancer, five years, they consider you cured. If it comes back the next week, they still consider you a success. And unfortunately, with the trillions of dollars we've spent, yes, people have lived, they're living longer, et cetera. But unfortunately, especially with breast cancer, the thing you have to worry about, when it comes back, it's a whole different ballgame. I didn't know this. Did you know when you do radiation, so if they radiate the breast cancer and it comes oh, back, yeah. you can never do radiation again. You can only do it once. Because oh, of the I did not know that. Absolutely. Well, hopefully we're going to learn some things on this call wow. today. I mean, I'm this nerdy researcher that finds this stuff out. And it's like, why is no one talking about oh, this? Oh, we're vibing. I'm no loving this. I'm loving it. I mean, I, I'm not enjoying all the information. I okay. am, it's, right. you know, so, it's a so mixed feelings. I'm glad right, we're learning this. <laughs> so let's come back to TDOS. And this is a statement, again, that I hope makes all the listeners mad. Food will never be enough again, period. I know and that. It's organic, okay? Yeah. Now, here's what we've missed on food. We've been counting these useless, worthless calories. The problem is that the D in TDOS is nutritional deficiency. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, nutritional deficiency is leading to toxicity, okay? But let me, let me go farther. When I talk about deficiency, what am I talking about? Primarily minerals. The body, we, in the best organic food you're going to get, the 70 minerals that we need, way beyond iron and calcium and magnesium. We need, we need 
uh, boron and molybdenum and zinc and copper and 70 minerals. In the best organic food you're going to eat, they've estimated you get 12 to 15 minerals. Also, they've said in 200 studies that nutritionally, organic versus regular food, there's almost no difference. It's less polluted, but from a nutritional standpoint of view, forget it. Now, let me give you three- I can back that up because as a farm kid, I knew that. I mean, we didn't have organic labels back right, then. Right, and I, guys, right. I was like, do you I can eat certify food? it all you want. Look, do I eat organic? Absolutely, but it's yes. because it's less polluted, not because it's more nutritious. And here, let me give you three quick examples. Let's take an orange. I think we both would consider an orange pretty healthy, right? The oh, I know this one. <laughs> orange from 30 years ago today to equal the nutrition of one orange, you have to eat eight. How about an apple a day keeps the doctor away? We all heard that, right? They estimated 1976 apple to 2012, you would have to eat a dozen apples to equal the nutrition of one apple. But here's I remember the, the, uh, the spinach study. Yeah, okay, the spinach study, UCLA. They estimate 1953 to 2010 that spinach has decreased in nutritional value, you ready for this, by 4,300%. Meaning one bowl of spinach in 53 would probably be around 30 to 40 bowls of spinach today. I tell people all the time, if you have a truck, that's what you need to drive to the grocery store. The concept of eating healthy is complete bull. It's bogus because our food is nutritionally bankrupt because we've ruined the soil with yeah. herbicides and pesticides, which not only destroyed the minerals, but it destroyed the fungi in soil that's capable of pulling the mineral apart so the plant can absorb it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a great book called The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan. A great I have read it. Okay. And he talks in there about we eat whatever they eat. Think about it. So when you ingest a cow with antibiotics and then you eat the cow, you're getting the antibiotics. And 80% of all antibiotics are given to, given to animals, chickens, cows, turkeys. So, I mean, but let's come back to deficiency for a minute. Now, why is it so critical? Because here's what we now know that we didn't know 15 years ago when I started, because the first study ever done on human beings of whether toxins were in our body was done by Mount, uh, Mount Sinai Medical School in 2005. I remember here's reading that too. Yeah. Here's what we now know. As we breathe, we eat, we drink, okay? For example, food has about 10,000 chemicals uh, used in its production and 226 have ever been tested for what they do to us. And I'll come back to this in just a moment, but let me, let me uh, make this point before I forget. So what's happening is the body has a natural detox mechanism. It's already in us. When we eat food, it goes in because one of the byproducts of food are toxins. So the body goes in and they have these special molecules. One of them is called glutathione that's capable of pulling the toxin apart, making it water soluble so it goes out to the kidney and throughout the, the liver. Well, now there was a study done just in 2010 on newborn infants by the American Red Cross. They found in every newborn infant in their cord blood at birth an average of 287 toxic chemicals, mercury, iodine, herbicides, pesticides, Teflon, Scotchgard, and gasoline byproducts in every That's scary. baby. That's scary. Worse, worse. Let's do this. If we, if we could test the breast milk of every woman in North America, you would have detectable levels of flame retardant and the chemical called glyphosate, which is the byproduct of Roundup. I'm sure you know what Roundup is. They spray it in your driveway. Uh, I don't allow any of that because <laughs> okay, Roundup, well, round uh, because you okay. mentioned all these Ides earlier. We all know that if you actually translate Ides in Latin, it means death. Okay, no. so let's go, but let's go a little bit farther. So do you have children? I do not. Uh, okay. We've chosen not to. So. You've seen children though. You, you, oh, God, you know, yeah. I have nieces, nephews, I mean, yeah. So your friends have a child. Well, when they're little, like basically one and a half to two, one of the very first things they can eat, would you agree, are Cheerios on their high chair. They pick them up and they can put them in their mouth, right? I can't stand it, but yes, yeah. Okay, so, but it's gonna get even worse. So the government has set limits on glyphosate, which is the active pesticide within the Monsanto family with Roundup, okay? They've set a limit, a safe limit is one part per billion, okay? You ready for this? My friend actually in Lancaster, a major documentary filmmaker is coming out with a documentary in the next six months, specifically about glyphosate. In mm. Cheerios, he told me this, they've measured it. Cheerios have 1,224 parts per billion, 1,200 times the safe limit, and we're giving it to our kids. Because it's, a, it's, it's, it it's manufactured food. But hold on, Peter, wait, wait Peter. What about when they, they, they tell us that, oh, these are enriched with vitamins, which also doing is spraying some kind of liquid spray yeah, vitamin exactly. over it. 
there's so little. See, they have enough to list it on the label, but never enough to do you any good because it's too expensive, okay? It's not a whole but, food. Right, but let's keep going on TDOS because this is important. Oh, yeah. So toxicity. Now, why is that so significant? Because when we ingest these chemicals that are now proven that are in us, for example, you at your age, no matter what you're doing, you have between 1,000 and 2,000 chemicals in your adipose fat tissue. You've heard the term skinny fat, I assume. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So because you're in such good shape and you're thin, you're actually at a much, much higher risk than people that are obese in terms of toxins. Because what, you're, what our body does when we breathe it, drink it, eat it, brush our teeth with it, wash our hair, the body takes the chemical and it stuffs it in a fat cell. No amount of, you could run from, from Allentown to New York City or lose no toxins in sweat. You could sit in a sauna all day long, lose no toxins in sweat. That, that's this, what Sylvia Terra told us on, on our podcast. She said, Scott, she's like, your fat cells are designed to protect you. They're pulling that out, especially as right. an athlete. But now we have scientific evidence. The American Society of Endocrinologists, the doctors who deal with all of our endocrine, our, you know, our hormones and all that kind of stuff, this is their term. They say these chemicals, they now call them obesogens. They yes. say when they enter the body, the body takes the chemical, stuffs it in a fat cell, but more importantly, it's altering our hormones and reprogramming our bodies to store the chemicals in fat. That's why diets can't possibly work. You see, about one of the things in scientific uh, evaluation, the very first thing you learn, unless you understand the magnitude of a problem, you can't ever come up with a real solution. Okay. Given the fact, say, go to the doctor, they don't just taste your A1C or blood sugar. They want to know your liver enzymes and your cholesterol and all these other kind of things so they can figure out where are you as a totality. So toxicity is being driven by nutritional deficiency. Now, if you don't believe me how bad this is, there was a study done four years ago on obese children. They found that 25% of these kids were suffering from rickets and scurvy, which are diseases of malnutrition. So it comes back to the concept. It's not about the calories. It's about what's in the calorie. So Thank what you. they were doing, they were starving to death, as most obese people are. They're starving for nutrition. There was a study done on, and I won't name them by name, but of the four or five biggest weight loss companies in this country and their products. And there's a new term, maybe you're familiar with it. In the old days, they used to talk about the RDA, required daily allowance. Now the new term, it's much more accurate, is called the required daily intake of botanicals, of minerals, of nutrients. They estimate to meet the minimum RDI on these plants. On the low side, you ready for this? You'd have to ingest 16,500 calories a day, up to 26,000 calories a day to meet the minimum RDI. I get so mad when I see these commercials on TV. It's like I want to scream. I want to tell the world, no, 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 this stuff doesn't work. All they're doing is getting you to lose weight, like in the study. Yeah. You and then you gain it back, and guess what? Then you go back on their diet, or it's the normal. You're on the. You're on. I call it the hormonal roller coaster, too. Absolutely. And so everything we thought we knew about diet and exercise now is completely wrong. Yeah. Because we're dealing with a new set of circumstances called the Tito syndrome, toxicity being driven by nutritional deficiency. And guess what that leads to? Becoming overweight. Hmm. Because we're storing these, that's how skin, that's why you're skinny. We have skinny fat. Well, that's also, I mean. It's a real I've, thing. It's the percentage of body fat compared to muscle. And in many people that are thin, they're actually obese from a fat hmm. standpoint. Well, also, I mean, to your point. I'm guessing some of the skinny fat you're relating to obviously the organ related fat tissue, which is the visceral fat. That's yes. the really bad, bad stuff. Yes. So I forget what color it is. But well, yes. Yeah, there's it's different colors of fat. So. Hard, but but th that's part of it. Okay. But the visceral is really dangerous. But, so but let's keep going to where you started this. Let's talk about stress, which most people don't understand. Mm. We need stress in our life. If I'm chasing, I'm living in Colorado and I get chased by a coyote, which is actually near my Fight house. or flight. Yeah, exactly. I need to go into stress. And what was stress, it produces a hormone called cortisol. Absolutely natural. We need it, et cetera. But where we go astray is when, when stress is chronic 24 seven, which many people experience. You probably did in the corporate world. I did in my previous life. So well, to, ba to back you up on the, you're talking about this crazy high caloric intake. I can't even fathom doing that because people couldn't fathom. I was actually fighting to consume 10,000 calories a day because I didn't know back in 2010 and 2011 when I left corporate and did the firefighting because right. I was hiking with 50 pounds of gear 16 hours a day in the mountains with a chainsaw and they right. said well the diggers in, in the because you're living in Colorado you know about wildland firefighting yeah, 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 absolutely. so the, the on a hot shot crew you, you the sawyers go in first with the chainsaws so you, I started as a digger as a rookie and he said okay you're probably gonna average five to seven thousand of caloric intake 
obviously to your point, yes, nutrient, uh, nutrients matter. But I was like, how do I, I, I was stuffing food in my pockets and obviously we didn't have proper food. They were giving us cliff bars and crap. It was just awful. But point is, it's just, it's just crazy to fathom that. And, I, and I, I had no idea what I was doing during that time as far as the accumulated exhaustion connected to stress that you're telling us well, about right plus now. Can you imagine the toxins you breathed in? Oh, I, that's why I did only for two years because unfortunately my health nuttiness kicked in over that time and I started learning about toxicity of the body and getting my body to naturally detox better. So, and because I, I couldn't work out after I finished the firefighting season, you can help explain this. I, for the next six, 60 days, I, I went and backpacked Ireland. I was on vacation for a month, bouncing around. I had, my energy was in the tank. I had no idea what was wrong with me. So much accumulated exhaustion, toxicity it was crazy. Well, so let's come back to stress because stress, before we even get to Tito's contribution, you know, now we're talking basically, you know, I fly all the time. I see these corporate guys they are working seven days a week. They're on Twitter and their phones and all this kind of stuff. So they're suffering chronic stress. And here's the problem with chronic stress. Cortisol, which is there to help us when, it, when it's elevated all the time, there's four major things it does. First, it begins to shut down the immune system. Secondly, it absolutely begins to cause osteoporosis and osteopenia in women. And it forces your body to store fat and go to 100% sugar burning mode. And the last part is it actually shrinks our brains. We know this, it's absolute. But here's the other side effect that most people don't understand. When you have elevated cortisol levels, the other thing that goes up in your body is insulin. And what is insulin there to do? It tells your body to store fat. So now you've got cortisol shutting off your body's ability to burn fat while at the same time you're storing fat. And we wonder why 80% of them, and keep in mind, That's when, why you diets don't work. Diet, when you go on one of these diets, you're in starvation mode from the first second. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that's why the doctors say don't lose more than a pound a week on a diet because what your body will do, especially whether it's Atkins, paleo, whatever, it will convert your muscles into carbohydrates. See, here's the big knock. Sugar, the body, the brain only, it has to have four grams of sugar every three hours. The problem is, you know, you got 30 ounces, 30 grams of sugar in a, in a glass of orange juice. Yeah. I mean, we've so overdone it, it's insane, okay? But the body needs carbohydrates. So you go all protein. Your body will convert your muscles and you will lose muscle mass like crazy. And of course, these people that are on these programs where it's, you know, 1,500 calories a day, what they fail to mention is they're literally getting, from a nutritional standpoint of view, like 10 calories. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now toxicity is being driven by deficiency, which is causing us to be overweight, which is making our stress levels go through the moon. And then we wonder why you've got this epidemic worldwide. And like I said, I get crazy when I see these commercials. They're lying to the public. This is not me saying this. No. That's what the studies are saying. I, I love what you're hitting on because there's so many things that you've, you've hit on. And for the listeners, I mean, you're going to have to go back and really listen to this episode again, uh, FYI. Or because read my books. I, I'm go and read the books. All the above because, for example, I, fa I found cross my love of CrossFit thanks to the wild and firefighting thing, right? Prior to that, I was love just spitting CrossFit. it. Yeah, I, I was doing – getting outside and doing that in the outdoors and the healthy UV light and everything else. FYI, it's, I'm later than you, so I'm putting on my blue blockers. So um, – because I care about my circadian rhythm. I'm sure we'll talk about that too. But the, the point is, is that I didn't know that, oh, well, the CrossFit way back then was – you know, you got you to hustle, man. You got to get in your workouts. I was training like five days on, two days off, and I was basically getting accumulated exhaustion again. Now, like right now, I might work out three days a week of CrossFit. I have more rest and recovery than I ever did before, and I'm in great condition right now because I'm allowing my body to rest and recover. I tell you all the time, you already talked about it. Stress, you have nutrition, we have sleep, rest and recovery. I mean, all of these things have to work together. It's not just one thing. Well, you know, my trainers, I, I work with celebrity trainers actually in Hollywood, some pretty famous people that they train and, and they even tell their clients, they said, and once they've discovered me, they go, you know, we, well, in the study, they said that exercise at best is 10 to 20%. If you're hmm. even trying to lay, lose or maintain weight, 80% of it is nutrition, but not the kind of nutrition we're used to. We need these new nutritional technologies. And I think now for the listeners, I, I know I've cheered everybody up. They're probably depressed. You know, so <laughs> I, I wrote two books. Wrote Wait, there's two. answers, Peter? Because yeah. it's not the end of the world? <laughs> well, the first book is called The Tito Syndrome. The second book is called Tito's Solutions. Notice plural. 
because it's more than one thing. So now let's really go in and blow up some myths, okay? So I want to I want to go back to my story for just a second. Okay. What happened is that when I had this incredible result and then I met the man that had invented this nutritional technology, it led me on this path. I've read more than 500 books, spent more than 10,000 hours in research. However, I've worked with these world experts in genetics, in molecular biology, in medicine, in oncology, um, you know, in autism and, and behavioral modification and all these kinds of fields, right? And so what I'm going to share with you next is what they told me you must have that you're not going to ever get from food. You're not going to get it from regular supplements. And okay. this, uh, this is kind of the secret recipe. So I want to come back to my story for just a moment. I believe I'm alive today. I believe that I'm on this podcast with you because my friend turned me onto this concept, which he didn't know anything about, but it didn't matter. I, I told him, I said, hello, I'll, I'll eat road tar if it won't kill me. Because what I was doing, I was doing everything right. I was, and I'm not against drugs. Don't get, you not hear me say that. But for me, that particular protocol did not work. And so it just drove me to, to, to do this. And, and the more I talked to these scientists and doctors, the more I said, why is no one talking about this? Why is no one on television talking about the fact that calorie is useless? It's only what's in the calorie. That, and now the big rage on Google, the second most popular thing is intermittent fasting. Mm. Great idea because all you have to do, Scott, to detox, just don't eat for four hours. Which it'll is BS. It'll turn on. It will turn on the detox mechanism. Peter, I did not eat until two o'clock today, mm -hmm. but I've, I'm familiar with what you're telling us now. A lot of our listeners might've heard on past episodes. So I'm with you because I'm not just, Oh, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm extending my fasted state. Yeah. Well, but here's the, here's the, I'm going to, unfortunately, I'm going to completely blow this out of the water. Okay. What you have done because of the lack of nutrition, you have absolutely put your body into starvation mode. No matter what you think, that's what's occurred because of lack. What we need is nutritional density in the fewest calories possible. That's what I've been taught. Well, I, 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 do, I do do, you might think this is weird, but I order my olive oil straight from a farm in Italy. So it's been untouched. I'm sure you probably have read Extra Virginity. It's olive oil in this country. Olive oil and, and, and organic coconut oil guy. for, for, yeah. for So I, I do shots of olive oil every day. So I should, I should clarify, I'm not, technically fully fasted i'm fat adapted so i actually like to take healthy fats in so all right but the um, problem is that you're missing all of the other things that we've identified that we need as human beings that are not in olive oil you don't have right, seven, like essential eight. vitamins and minerals okay so let's go through what i learned okay? okay so what did i actually do what did i consume i need to just take a pause for the cause here i believe the world's greatest the best food in the world is mother's breast milk backed up by yes. the fact that nature omnivores who eat plants and carnivores who eat meat nurse their young with milk okay there's a big pushback on milk today but what people fail to realize is the main problem with milk allergies today is because of pasteurization and homogenization when i was young we used to get the milk delivered in a glass bottle on the on the stool uh, stoop in the morning and there'd be curds and whey on the top okay mother's breast milk is comprised 60 percent whey protein and 40 percent milk protein Okay, so I mean, nature's pretty well telling us what we should be doing. Sure. But the problem is, when you ingest milk in this country, by law, it has to be pasteurized or homogenized. They've destroyed the enzymes, they've destroyed. When I was a kid, nobody had a milk allergy. There was no such thing as lactose intolerant, peanut I agree. allergies, all that. N none of that existed, okay? We messed so, up all the gut biology. Right, okay. So, for example, I'm going to tell you something shocking. You know, they have vitamin D enriched milk, okay? You've seen that, right? Do you know how they get the vitamin D in FYI, there? FYI, I was born on a dairy farm in New Jersey. So you're, you're vibing with me right now. And my very first job at 14 was working on a large dairy farm here in Pennsylvania. So I, I used so to ride guess, my bike there. Guess how, guess how they get vitamin D into milk? I don't they know, actually. They radiate the milk. They radiate the milk. You ready for this? What? Wait, you heard me. They radiate the milk. My, my kids, my grandkids have never had milk unless it's organic. Absolutely, 100%. The other way they put it in there is sheep sweat to get vitamin D in the milk. As a, as a carrier? Milk has no vitamin D in it. Do you understand? I know that. Well, that's why they say it's rich vitamin D. See, but again, you know, the theme of my TV show is what if you didn't know, what you think you know, when would you want to know, guess what? You're about to find out, right? Yeah. So let's keep going on this. So the world's most perfect food is definitely mother's breast milk. I'll tell you something else that most people don't understand. 
And I was taught this by my colleague, who's one of the world's greatest on uh, cancer researchers, oncologist and molecular biologist, who's published nearly 210 peer-reviewed papers in the biggest medical journals in the world and worked with two Nobel laureates. He taught me this, okay? So okay. I'm telling you what he taught me. He said, Peter, do you understand when a baby is born, it's completely sterile? For the most part, it has no immune system whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's only as the baby passes through the birth canal, picks up bacteria, viruses, fungi, yeast, and microbes. And then, and only then, when it, when it intersects with colostrum, the first, the clear liquid in mother's breast milk and breast milk, is the immune system formed. Hmm. NIH published a study, babies born cesarean that weren't breastfed, 50% yes. higher incidence of autism. I have read that. Okay. So breast milk is comprised, like I said, 60% whey protein, 40% milk protein. Whey protein is very fat. I'm sorry. Whey protein is very fast acting. Goes okay. in and of course, you know, the, the child's, the fetus is developing so fast. I mean, the baby's developing so fast. It needs that. But the milk protein is more slow acting, sort of like a time release so that you go on to it. Okay. So real so, quick, um, I, I, I I'm because this is totally on with what you're asking about. I ha I was, it's been in my head. I have to get the question out because I don't want to lose it. <laughs> I had on recently, not too long ago, a Dr. Anthony J. I forget if he's a biologist, scientist, I'm blanking on it, but he's, um, his book is on estrogeneration. So I'm sure you appreciate that estrogen mm -hmm. and all that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know if it was him or somebody else who had told me that we're the only mammals that are still fill, fill, you know, feeding milk. I'm is air it? quoting for our listeners, milk. No, 100%. Um, after the age of four. Or maybe it was two. So no, I, mean, I don't know if you've heard about that study. But it's okay. I, I agree with him. Okay. So you do agree with that. Okay. Because I'm like, I was like, you know, I, I probably drank a lot of milk as a kid. But admittedly, I agree with it nowadays. I'm like, why? Because you're right. There is no vitamin D. So, and the, cal not, the calcium that, density is not there either. But that's not the, that's not the reason. Okay? okay. The reason is in pasteurization and homogenization, you basically are changing the chemical makeup of the, of the milk itself. Okay. Right. Fortunately, what you can do, what I did, again, this is from the experts telling me what to do. Um, and my, my colleague, this is pretty remarkable. He's in, in Europe, in Switzerland and Germany, they only work with stage four cancer patients that are given three to four months to live. Okay. Hmm. The first thing they do is, because they're not on chemo or radiation, the first thing they do is they change their diet to basically a ketogenic diet, which is a maximum of, let's say, 20% carbs or less, ideally less, 60% mm -hmm. protein, and 20% good fats, olive oil, which you're doing, yep. and coconut oil. Because What's, guess what? what? Guess what most of your brain tissue is? Fat tissue as well, of right? Of course. Yeah, that's why you need omega-3s, but that's another discussion for another <laughs> podcast. But anyway, let me keep going. Yeah. So Dr. Ruggiero, what they did, they changed their diets. 80% of the patients are still alive six years later. Let me repeat mm -hmm. that. 80% of the stage four, by just changing their diets, by going to 20% carbs, 60% protein, 20% good fats. Ironically, vegetables do not have the same neuroprotective mo uh, molecules as milk does. Unfortunately, that, but it's not milk. It's what's in the milk. It's the whey protein and the milk protein. I love That's that because I got that in the glass bottle. So on the top, there'd be whey and what they call whey and curds, but it would separate out the whey protein. It, it's definitely a different podcast, but I'm, I mean, I don't mind upsetting listeners because it's my show, but it's like, listen, I respect people who choose the vegetarian and the vegan lifestyle. I'm all good but, with that. I'm just telling uh, you. But the you are, mis for example, there's an essential vitamin, B12. Mm -hmm. that's that's my answer to that lifestyle where's the b12 you mm -hmm. got to get it from meat protein it's it's a, or, or a animal an animal protein Any, Thank you. And it can also be fish okay it doesn't have yeah to yeah be. so so let me let me continue because this is a mm. really really important point so what the misconception is about milk is we're not talking about drinking milk here we're talking about whey protein and milk protein okay what were they using what were they giving these patients they were giving them an undenatured, meaning non-pasteurized whey protein from Switzerland, where they use no hormones, no anything, okay? Now, ironically, the man that invented this, what did he use? He went to New Zealand, which is considered the finest whey protein in the world. Mm -hmm. No hormones, no antibiotics, the cows only eat grass, and it has one of the highest percentage of amino acids of any protein source on planet Earth. Here's something the vegans need to know. In vegetables, by, by just design, they're much higher in carbohydrates and much lower in amino acids as a total quantity. As a matter of fact, people don't understand. If you take a bowl of cooked 
peas. The glycemic index is higher on the peas than it is in a bowl of ice cream. Wow. That's how much sugar is actually in vegetables, okay? Yeah. Um, now I, I have lots of vegan friends, and I'm all okay with that. I'm just explaining the difference, okay? Oh, yeah, I'm, and, and that's for you. I'm not picking on them. How many vegetables you yeah. never get these neuroprotective molecules that are contained, let's say, in an undenatured, meaning non-pasteurized um, whey protein, but it goes much farther than that. Hmm. So when he put this together, the man that invented it, there were two other things. He had also, remember I talked about mineral deficiency. Yes. The 70 minerals, which you get in 12 to 15 to 20 in an organic. Mm -hmm. Well, some almost 35 or 40 years ago, he discovered the largest deposit of minerals in the world in Nevada, where he had all 70 of these minerals, and he got the first patent on the consumption of minerals by human beings. So what do you think he added to the shake that I took, the 70 minerals? Seven. <laughs> And he's considered, he was called the mineral man. And he, he, like I said, I don't know if you're probably not into cosmetics, but I know this just because of research, but there's a line called bare essential minerals, which contains yes. all, those are his minerals. Okay. okay. He's the father of minerals. Okay. So, but the second thing he did when he created this, he used prebiotic fiber. Are you familiar with the difference between probiotics and prebiotics? Well, usually when I'm explaining to people about their gut health, their answer, close friends of mine, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to Whole Foods and I buy probiotics every single week. And I'm like, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> what a prebiotic does, it, when you ingest it, it allows your body to manufacture more of the good gut flora. And anytime you can make it, instead of taking it, you're light years ahead, okay? But here is the game changer from, from when he invented this, which I believe helped to save my life. He added three groups of enzymes. The first one is called lactase. Well, pretty, you know, people have lactose intolerance. Some people do. So he put that in there. So when, if people ingested these shakes, they wouldn't have a problem. The second one he added is an enzyme called lipase, which does what? Metabolizes fat in the human body. And the third group, which is critical, are called proteases. Now I'm going to- That one I'm not familiar with. No, I know. Yeah. You wouldn't find one person in a million that would know this, okay? <laughs> so- they were all in there 15 years ago. And he put them in there primarily because of digestion and whatever, okay? So my colleague, this world-famous oncologist, his name is actually Dr. Ruggiero. You can Google him. Hmm. He, um, How do you spell that? R-U-G-G-I-E-R-O, Marco Ruggiero. He's published, like I said, over 200 peer-reviewed papers, worked with two Nobel laureates, and listen to this. Two of his medical papers are in the top 5% of all medical papers that have ever been published, and that's in the millions and millions of papers. That's okay? impressive. This is, a, one of the, this is the smartest person I've ever met. So he taught me this. So when he was over here, and now he, I met him at Autism One a few years ago, and we wrote a book together, and we've become great friends, and he taught me all this. So the man that invented it did not know that, for example, these enzymes they only responded to two things, and I'll explain that to you in just a second. But his colleague had uh, the, the scientific measurement, it's called net protein utilization. If your audience doesn't get anything else, this is the most critical thing I'm ever gonna share with them. Mm -hmm. We talked about the fact that one of the things we're woefully short on are amino acids, okay? Why is that so critical? Because amino, we rebuilt, for example, you make the, you redo the lining of your gut twice a month, you remake your liver totally twice a year, and you remake pretty much every cell in your body once every seven years. The only way you do that is with amino acids. And people think it's because I eat protein. The human body cannot use extraneous protein. No, it so has, to be, it has to be processed from within. Right. So what the body has to do, there are 20 amino acids we need, eight are called non-essential, they're in us, and 12 you have to get from your diet. When the body ingests a protein, it extracts the amino acids from those animal sources and rearranges them to make human proteins. Now, this may be something you don't know. Protein is the single most important thing you could ever put in your body, not because of the protein, because of the amino acids. So, for example, if you took the dry weight of the human body, if you tuned all the fluids out, 50% of the weight of the human body is protein. The body has 22,000 genes. How many proteins do you think it makes? I don't know the answer to that one. 22,000 proteins. Okay. But the only way the body can make human proteins is from amino acids. Okay. So the, the so like for some of our sports listeners, like people who care about BCAs, right? Branch chain amino, branch acids, chain amino acids, right? Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So well, to your point, the quality of the protein though, determines your ability to process well, that, and create and make those aminos. Part, but here's the, here's the part they didn't know before. Hmm. There's a measurement called net 
protein utilization, where they took steak and chicken and fish and eggs and a cross section of things. And they measured, I mean, ideally you'd want to be at hundred percent amino acids. You want pure, if you could, you'd want hundred percent of amino acids, right? Oh yeah. Well, when they did this analysis, which there's maybe 10 people in the world that can do this analysis, they looked at meat, chicken, fish, the maximum on a scale of zero to hundred, the highest of any meat, chicken, fish, vegetable they found was only 30%, 70% was waste. Now, interesting enough, when, he, when my, my friend came to the States, guess what they were, well, I told you already, they were using a undenatured whey protein from Switzerland. Okay. So he had that and he went out and bought 20 other shakes from Whole Foods and Jenny, you know, whatever that was, right? And mm -hmm. then took the shake that I had been using mm -hmm. and analyzed that along with 20 shakes. The highest utilization of amino acids from any shake, including the one I had been instructed to take, was only 15%. Some of them were 9%, which means 85% was complete waste. As yeah, a you're, you're basically just flushing your money down the toilet. Well, no, you weren't. No, there's still benefit, even at 15%. Oh, okay. Okay? But what these athletes don't understand, they're loading themselves up with protein, not realizing that only 30% of what they're ingesting is actually turned into what the body can use. 70% is turned into toxins. Urea, which is what you get when you get gout, mm -hmm. creatine, ammonia and glucose, believe it or not, okay? Now, I was taught this by this incredibly, this genius. He had no dog in this hunt. He did an analysis. First, he made all the shakes in cold water and drank them in five minutes, and the maximum utilization was 15%, including what I had taken. Then he did a very strange thing, at least for me. He took all the shakes and he made them in 100 degree water, and he let them sit for 40 minutes, and he retested them. Oh. Nine yeah, 19 out of the 20 shakes were still 15%. Now, the reason he knew this is he had worked with this enzyme protease since 1980 with Sir John Vane, who won the Nobel Prize in medicine for his work on enzymes. Okay. And when he retested the one that I had, it went from 15% to 90%, the highest utilization of amino acids of any protein source ever tested on planet earth i thought you're not supposed to superheat proteins wrong oh well wrong. what if you I, didn't wait, know I, I, I thought i thought i thought undenatured we're not protein superheated here we're talking 100 degrees oh 100 degrees oh interesting okay a little more than body temperature which makes sense because 98.6 okay. is body temperature okay so what's been the result of this discovery that he made about 14 months ago well, we started to give this to athletes. Just in the last two weeks, I had a, this trainer in LA who was very skeptical, 25 years old. Started at 14% body fat. In 14 days, he went from 12% body fat to 5% body fat and gained five pounds of lean muscle. Try and do that on anything you're doing. Because I'll tell you right now, again, 100 that's what I'm saying. Maximum you're going to be is only 30% of what's possible. Am I making sense? Because oh, you're we're getting, making sense. You're, so. you're getting, if you're eating steak, chicken, you're getting 30%. If you're doing a shake, you're getting 15%. Yeah. If any shake, it's only this. And he has, he doesn't work for the company. He is an independent study. It has nothing to do with it. Okay. It, it, you know, you know, the gentleman I brought up earlier, the famous trainer, uh, Vinny Tortorich. Yes. He, he's, he is, he would, he would be your biggest battle, right? Because he's so old school. I respect him, right? He, he trademarked NSNG, no sugar, no grains. Excuse me, excuse me, is he a molecular biologist? Has he nope. published 200 peer-reviewed exactly. papers in the world? I respect him for Don. his NSNG lifestyle, Love but he's, an, he's anti-protein Where, shakes. Where's your evidence? I know. Where, I know. Where's his evidence? See, this is what makes me nuts because yeah. it's what he doesn't know. Right. He's and I've tried, I've tried, tell, I've tried, I've, I've been on his podcast. I'm like, I was like, Vinny, I was like, I was like, you just haven't talked to the right people. Any program where you go from 12% body fat to 5% body fat in 14 days and gain five pounds of muscle. Let me see. I want to see a program where he does that. Boom. Not happening. I've been through this for 15 years, but only in the last 14 months did we learn this. There was always in these shakes, but we didn't understand how to unleash it. None of the other shakes contained the enzymes. Mm. None of the other shakes had those proteases. That's the game changer. But let me tell you a more important thing. Hmm. What's one of the key things about whey protein that's critical? It is the most major food for your immune system because it contains an amino acid called cysteine, which manufactures in our body something called glutathione, which is the major detox molecule in our body. Yes. But we don't have enough to deal with all these chemicals that are being stored inside no, of us. Oh, we're bombarded. Right. So watch this. So we know by definition they're very high branched amino acids contained within these whey proteins from New Zealand, okay? So imagine this, before 
and it saved my life. I was accessing 15% of this particular enzyme called cysteine, which makes glutathione. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens when you go from 15% cysteine to 90% cysteine? Do you think you're going to make more glutathione? I don't know. The, math, the mouse kind of sounds math. simple. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is we're seeing the results in the last 14 months. I'm loving I mean, it. We're, we're seeing people, most people that do the protocols that I talk about in the TDOS pro, uh, uh, solutions, they lose, if it's weight loss, they lose as much weight in four days as they will in eight weeks of diet and exercise, including your friends, whatever the hell program he has. Well, okay? here's the best part. What yeah. you just talked about, about the guy's uh, transformation. Yes. And I have a feeling we're talking about the same shake, but we're not talking about this right now, but I have a feeling that I'm, I've used the same one. That was one of my best transformations. Like I was probably between 12 to 14. But and, you were making it in five minutes. Right. But I, I dropped down to, I think, 8%. Right. And, and, and probably a 30, 60-day period, put on lean muscle. I was like, whoa, what's going this on was, here? Yeah. Dude, this was, this was 14 days. I know. I didn't even track it like that. That's crazy. Right, so, so, again, hopefully you're learning something. So, yeah. again, I got a lot more to cover, so I, I just want to Keep make sure. Keep going. That so, glutathione being the major, major detox molecule in our body. So in order to get rid of these toxins, what you have to do is you have to arm your body with these molecules that'll disarm them. So mm. the kidney and the liver will process it out of your body. See, when you go on your fast, you are detoxing a little bit at a time. But the fallacy there is you're in such, you're not making more glutathione. It's impossible. You're okay. nutritionally deficient. I don't care what you say. Even olive oil, whatever you're doing, you're completely, you don't have okay. proteases in there, number one. So any protein you are eating even later, maximum you're at 30%, okay? What do you think would happen if all of a sudden you go to 100% of the minerals and 90% of the amino acids? Do you know that we all suffer from disease starting at age 25 called sarcopenia? Have you ever heard that, of it? That I'm familiar with. Oh, yes. Okay. So you lose 1% of your muscle mass every year. Look at someone in a nursing home at 80 years old, and they're literally, the skin's hanging, they, they've all lost all their muscle mm -hmm. mass because they didn't have these amino acids through their life because of the protein sources that they use. Well, okay? isn't, there tr isn't there truth to the self-cannibalization factor? Yes. Yeah. That's called, it's called a, a catabolic metabolism. There we go. Okay, so when, you, when you go in starvation mode, it starts first where it will prevent your body from burning fat. Well, when you don't have enough <laughs> carbohydrates, your body converts your muscles into, into carbohydrates. But let's keep going. So what, I'm, what I say to my audience is I said, okay, so today, or you, Scott, you can make a choice. Go to your kitchen and put whatever you want. So behind door number one, maximum 15% of the minerals. And 30% of the amino acids. Behind door number two is 100% of the minerals and 90% of the amino acids. Which door are you going to choose every day for the rest of your life? Uh, the mathematics kind of uh, answers that for us. <laughs> so what I'm saying is if the listener is going to go out and they're going to look for a shake, it must contain minerals, it must have prebiotic fiber, and it, even if it doesn't have those, it must have these proteases, these five enzymes. Because so that's, what, that's what you're blowing my mind on because I used to geek out just when I, I would ha I, once I learned about denaturing versus undenaturing, that's what I really focused on. I, it was really hard to find right, but it's great shapes like that. that. Look, do you ever take chemistry in high school? Oh, yeah. You went in the lab, you had the Bunsen burner, you put in the two elements, you added water, and then what'd you do? You held it over a, a flame. Yeah. And that's how the chemical conversion happened. The same thing with these proteases. Like I said, he's worked with them for 30 years. Yeah. And only, the only reason he did the analysis was for his cancer patients. Because obviously he knew wow. if he can give them ninety percent amino acids, that's a lot better than fifteen percent. Well, it's really hard to it's hard to argue that five steaks a day, right? Yeah. Well, well I mean, they, they get sixty percent of their diet in protein. They can't eat five steaks a day, but they uh, can eat three shakes a day. I, I agree with you, and it's funny you bring that up real quick because I just had a, a guy's online known as Sean Baker. For the past year, he's been testing a one hundred percent steak diet uh, lifestyle. Him. Good for him, but but to your point. 30%. The, da the data I'm hearing, right? You're saying 30%. So 30% uh, net amino value. So, okay, let's keep going. Yeah. So the second thing that you want to use, you want to get a, uh, a inner heart aloe vera only. You do not want whole leaf aloe because it's only in the inner heart of the aloe plant, which mm. contains these other to toxin hunters called polysaccharides. Yes. And what happens now? I live in Colorado. And you think you go to the health insurance, it says whole leaf aloe. Well, in Colorado, when it says whole leaf now, you got to be very careful, okay? <laughs> but very true. The, the point is that these very, these polysaccharides only reside in the inner heart gel of the aloe plant. They're not in the leaf. 
As a matter of fact, the reason you don't want a whole leaf is they grind up the plant because it's cheaper, but there's an enzyme in the leaf of the plant that destroys the polysaccharides. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, so you, want, you do not want, you want a, a high filtration uh, inner heart gel only aloe vera. You can buy them in any health food store. And for our them. listeners, inner heart, like, because I grew up, my mom used to use aloe, aloe plants on my injuries. It's the, white, it's the white gel inside. Okay? okay, so like at the core of the leaf, at the base. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's inside. You have to break the leaf open. It's the white gel inside. That is, it's called the inner heart filet of the aloe plant. Okay. But you don't want the leaf, okay? No. Now, so this is part of the protocol. And what do you think that this man added to the aloe vera? 70 minerals. So if you're going to go get an aloe vera, then you need, you should be adding the minerals to it because it so increases the effectiveness of it. Okay. Does it become a carrier or like well, when you say effectiveness? Or, look, I mean, what I'm saying is there are aloe veras out there that have all 70 minerals in it. You just hmm. have to look and find them. The third thing he created are these little, they're about the size of a quarter from the whey protein. They're only 30 calories. And the concept was forget the calories because the, that little 30 calories is equivalent to like two or 3,000 calories of food because it also has the 70 minerals. And then the uh -huh. fourth thing right, is a super vitamin, which contains the 70 minerals, but it also contains cleansing herbs like licorice and padarco and all these things. So it now becomes sort of a system, a whole life, or what I call a quality of life system. It's not a diet. It has nothing to do with dieting. So now you have the ingredients. And of course, I list all this in my book. I show you exactly. This is what you want to look for when you go to the store. You don't want to go and buy a shake that doesn't have proteases. Do you want to Scott, do you want to take a shake at 15% net amino value or would you rather have one at 90% net amino value? I would rather have better value. <laughs> That's right. the whole point because then okay. I, feel like, I feel like I'm inefficient. Okay, so the next part I teach people is the TDOS protocol. And what is it? It's low caloric, high dense nutrition with, now watch the terminology here, intermittent nutritional fasting. Okay. Not intermittent fasting. Big right. difference. It should be, you're, we're talking about supported, right? Right. With, with yeah. nutrition. Okay. Right. And here's how it works. So the first, and everybody pretty much starts out with 30 days because everybody's extremely toxic. And I work with people who weigh 600 pounds. Well, they're not going to be done in 30 days, but here's the basic program. The first two days, you have one of these shakes. Hopefully, now you're going to let it sit in the warm water. Um, you drink it. Then you have regular food for lunch, healthy, which it sounds like you're already doing. And then a shake tonight for the first two days to do two things. Stockpiling your body minerals, but also these toxin hunters, glutathione. So on days three and four, when you do the nutritional fat intermittent fasting, what you're doing is you're, you're basically – causing your body to go into the fasting mode because you're drastically lowering the calories. You drink four ounces of the aloe vera four times a day. You have six of these little 30 calorie um, snacks and the super vitamin, you're, you're around 300 calories. That turns on the detox mechanism in your body, but you're flooding, infusing your body with nutrition. So here's how the body works. In that first 24 hours and when you fasted today, the very first thing your body does, it goes to your liver, it looks for your stored glycogen or sugar, and it gets rid of it. And this particular case, it takes about 20, here's an interesting thing. It takes 22 to 24 hours to burn off all the excess sugar stored in our livers. Mm. It is only at the end of that period of time that your body then goes out. It only has two sources of energy left, muscle and fat. On a diet, what do you think it chooses every single time? Fat. Well, no, sorry. No, sorry. On diet, on a diet, yes. Yeah, diet, diet. <laughs> on this, I, I was so ingrained with, your, with the protocol. <laughs> I know, but you've got, you, you have these massive amounts of nutrition in very few calories. So the body gets to choose. It goes, oh, we got muscle. Oh, we got all this fat over here. It burns the fat, releases the toxin. And here's the difference between what you're doing. In comes the glutathione. In comes the polysaccharides to disarm those toxins that your body is releasing. And we've done, you talk about studies, we have scientific evidence that not only are we eliminating the adipose fat tissue, that's the soft fat, the jiggly fat on the outside, and the very visceral fat that lies underneath. Clinical studies proving that, that is that's how we went from 12% to 4%, 5% body fat in 14 days. And oh, yeah. he's working out seven days a week, he's a V, he does everything right but he's never seen anything like these kind of results. That's why. So with all due respect to your friend about the, 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 <laughs> uh, the whey protein shakes, nice try. Oh, Show me I, I'm with you. I well, argue this with them all the time. Show me the side. Okay, so yeah. at the end, here's what I warn people if they want to lose weight. And, and we have a saying, we say, just, get, just give us four days. Mm -hmm. Normally when people stand on that scale on the fifth morning, I have to warn them, I say, your scale's not broken. On average, average, 
I mean, people, like I said, they lose as much weight basically in four days as they do in eight weeks of diet and exercise. You yeah. know, diet, the general rule is a pound a week. Watch the ads on TV. They're bragging about a pound a week. Last year, Oprah lost 40 pounds in a year. Mm-hmm. I just had a woman in 30 days lose 42 pounds in 30 days. And she was probably 50 pounds overweight. But it's not a diet. She's detoxing her body. Now, so watch this. So after the first four, so you did two days of a shake, a meal, and a shake, two days of, of nutritional fasting. Then you did, now you do five days of a shake, meal, and a shake. Then you do two more days of the nutritional intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. And you repeat every seven days. You do two days of the intermittent nutritional fasting, five days of the shakes, so on and so forth. And like I said, you're basically giving your cells an oil change. Yep. See, this is completely different than a colon cleanse or a, a gallbladder cleanse. Or, and I'm not against those or a kidney cleanse, et cetera. It doesn't do the same thing because these well, toxins. This is, this is cellular colon. level, what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. And so with all due respect to your friend on the protein, there's no way. Whatever he's doing, he's not detoxing his body. Not possible. Because the problem is he could, if he goes to that low calorie like what you're doing, you're putting your body in starvation mode. Yeah. You are doing some detox, but the. Oh, uh, no. He, he does, he's against fasting, too. Well, he's he, completely wrong. Okay, I, 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 I completely agree with you because hundreds I've, and hundreds of studies now are saying that because I, I've used your protocol and I tell people all the time like what you're describing isn't just for weight loss. I was like, guys, like I you, tell you people said, it. don't do this to lose weight. That's a big mistake. Do it to maximize your quality of life potential. So I would say to your friend, you tell me how you're going to maximize your quality of life potential on 20% of the minerals and 30% of the amino acids. I'll sit here all day. I'll get crazy, mad, whatever. It's well, a bunch of bull. It's and to back you up. It's health and fitness junkies like he and I, I tell him like work at the, you said it earlier in the show, we're consuming more toxic water, more toxic air than the average person. So we have more concerns as athletes. Well, let to, me address that. This. Let's talk about women who run outside. Yes. And we've got this enormous increase, as I said, in breast cancer. Okay. Well, there's a toxin that I was made aware of. It's called a polycyclical aromatic hydrocarbon. That's a huge name. That's but a lot. <laughs> all it is, it's, it's, from anything that burns, like car exhaust. Mm -hmm. So here are these women running outside for marathons, et cetera. I mean, according to the science, it basically, that particular toxin dismantles the body's ability or in a woman to fight off breast cancer in in some parts, okay? So, and again, again, I'm not against exercise and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not a monk living on a hill, ringing a bell, eating seagrass, okay? I do have adult beverages, all right? But what I'm saying to you is, you know, I've delivered over 1,500 lectures all over the world. I did 20 shows on PBS, and hopefully my new television show called The Greenlaw Report is gonna expose all this stuff because mm-hmm. I'm sick and tired with all due respect to your friend that you work out with, where's his evidence? Oh, I don't, no, I don't work out with him. That's, that, that's the guy from LA. Yeah, I don't work out with him. No, because my opinion doesn't mean anything. I only go on evidence. Where's his evidence that he's reducing adipose fat tissue or visceral fat or reducing toxins in the body? Mm-hmm. We have proven that not only are we eliminating toxins, one of which is called phthalates, which is plastic, which is a major contributing factor to eliminating breast cancer because it raises estrogen, okay? So do you think it would be a good idea to assist your body in getting rid of some of this crap? Or do you think it's better to just continue what you're doing because all you're doing is feeding your body with nutrient deficient food, even if it's organic? I, I explained that to Dr. Uh, to Dr. Anthony J, the, the, the estrogen generation guy. I, I, we, we geeked out about this exact point. I'm like, because he's all about getting people to stop drinking out of plastic. I'm like, that's right. part of it, but we still can't control all of that. How much? You have 80,000 chemicals in commercial use, 80,000. Yep. And 2% have ever been tested for what they do to us. Yeah. And people are completely blind to this. That's why I'm saying, if you don't know about the TDOS syndrome, how in the world would you attack it? What would you do? We, I've already proven to you, diet and exercise is not the solution to the nope. TDOS syndrome. Okay, maybe you'll lose some weight for a while, but you're still toxic, Scott. You're still nutritionally deficient. And those two, if nothing else, are going to drive stress through the moon, no matter what you do. You can meditate. I'm all for that. But it's not enough because the body is out of balance. And we're going down the wrong road, talking mm-hmm. about diet and exercise, because the food has been nutritionally, it's bankrupt. Thank you. It's that was the word, bankrupt. It's bankrupt. It's nutritionally yeah. bankrupt. Yeah, so what actually we needed share all along again. was we need to put back into food what used to be there. Yep. It's pretty simple. There's Tito's solutions. Thank there you. There we go. Pretty simple concept that what you're doing is you're simply giving your body what it needs so your body can perform at a higher level, which I call maximizing your quality of life potential. 
Scott, what good is it to be 70 years old and you can barely walk across the street? Okay. I work with ultra. Yeah. That's our fourth book that I wrote with Dr. Ruggiero right there. Thank you very much. Oh, but yeah. What I'm saying is that I work with ultra marathoners. You know what, you know what ultra marathoners do, right? Oh yeah. 50 milers and hundred. No, oh, to be uh, ultra, oh, the ultra is a hundred. Yeah. Up to 185 miles. And yeah. I had one who's one of the world's leading geneticists and uh, he came to my lecture and was very impressed. He said, Hey, I want to do this detox. I said, why? He said, I run 81 miles a week in training. I fly in three organic meals. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I only do filtered water. He said, despite that, that kind of training, okay, he has 15 pounds around his middle. He couldn't lose. He said, Peter, do you know what it's like to carry 15 pounds for 100 miles or 150 miles? So he went on the protocol, okay? He called me up on the 12th morning, not even two weeks. He said, Peter, are you trying to kill me? I said, what are you talking about? He said, there's no way scientific, metabolically, what just happened to me is impossible. I said, what happened? He said, I just lost 15 pounds in 11 days. And he's kept it off now since 2010. So what, I mean, what he went through was sustainable. Well, he did what I said. He did intermittent nutritional fasting. And that was before we knew about letting the shakes sit. Yeah, that's something new because I've been following this protocol for years. I did not hear about the warm water thing. I, well, again, I'm loving it, this. It was Dr. Ruggiero that taught me this. Yeah. And again, you go, go shop a shake, but make sure it has proteases in there and then make it in warm water and let it sit. But I guarantee you, Scott, it will transform everything you're doing. You won't even believe. See, I always tell people, you don't understand how bad you feel until you realize how good you could feel. So I want to empower you to maximize your quality of life potential for the rest of your life. Well, the best part is I'm going to be, I'm going to get all your books because I follow, you and I both know that I know what you're doing and I know your protocols and, but I didn't know about these books. I didn't know about the warm water thing. I'm like, wait a minute. I've been. I've been doing the protocol for a while, but I didn't know there's been recent enhancements that I, I, I'm going to geek no out all over this. It was there all along. Right. That's the crazy thing. Just in the, nothing was added. Nothing was changed from 15 or 16 years ago. Nothing has been changed. We just got, this discovered by this things science. they didn't know. They didn't know. The science yeah, wasn't well, there yet, right? No, the science was there, but no one had ever analyzed it because there are so few people in the world can, that can do net protein utilization. Okay. It's going to become a huge thing. It's exciting. I love this. No, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling what I'm seeing. And these are 26, 27, 28-year-old trainers. Of course, so they, they think they know everything. <laughs> they about everything we know about shakes. I said, you have never tried this. You know how that goes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know, here's the thing. I'm not there to discredit anybody. If you want to continue to make your shake in, in cold water, it saved my life, okay? I didn't know until 14 months ago about this. And what saved my life was taken the shake, it had these things, but they weren't activated. Hmm. They only get activated in the warm water and time. They yeah. were sitting basically inert. They might have helped with digestion some, and most people would say, oh, well, we, we make our shakes in five minutes and drink it. Keep doing that. It still will give you benefit. But I'm just, I'm a simple guy. I go, you know, I was pretty good in math. I'm thinking, okay, 30% net protein utilization behind door number one and 20% of the minerals. And behind number two, get 70 minerals and get the proteases and let the shake sit and you go to 90%. I, I actually tell people, I said, you know, which door are you going to choose? And why would you not choose this door? What I know. I'm loving, it. I'm loving it. Well, real quick. So is it just a shake or what, what, what about the pure protein? Will it do the same thing? No, you just the, have the pure protein? Yeah, the enzymes aren't in there. The proteins right, are Right, right. You got to have the full shake. Okay. Right. right. See, because again, by, you need, you need the, the way, full you formula. Want, you want to go with more protein. You want to go with 36 grams, not 24. Yeah. Because in the 36, you have a much lower sugar. The more protein you have, if you use the same amount of sugar, the sugar doesn't affect you because you have less sugar. But you need the sugar to help metabolize the whole process of breaking the whey proteins down. Hmm. Now, I should have said this. In, in non-dairy shakes the net protein utilization is 30%. It's oh. double what it is in whey protein. But again, Interesting. it's still only 30%. Okay. You can't okay. get higher than that. It doesn't contain proteases because vegetables are different than, you know. You, you said this animal. earlier, yeah. Well, yeah, because I've said. had friends who obviously, they're, I'm trying to respect their lifestyles and they want to be. Them, great, do it. Yeah, I mean, nothing, we'll, we'll, nothing you'll get, you'll get close, but you're not going to get to the same level. Why would you settle for less than? If you, need, if you need 70 minerals, why would you settle for 15? If you need 100% of amino, we can't get there. We're not, that's nirvana. Mm. But, if we get, but here's this other side part that I want to explain to you. The 90% is not just significant for the amount of amino acids, 
but it means you only have 10% waste to deal with with your kidneys and your filtration system. So your and organs that, get a lighter load. Of, they're not getting as worked load. out as heavily. Well, look, when people are on kidney dialysis, what do they limit? Their protein. And they're limiting because of the waste product from the protein that the liver, I'm sorry, the kidneys have to process. Hmm. So if you know, basically what you're drinking when you let this sit, according to my, my uh, colleague, you're drinking pure amino acids. And let me, let me bring up one other point that wow. people criticize whey protein. They, they criticize it because naturally occurring is something, um, th there's something called, um, we'll write it on my head. Um, I'll, think, I'll think of it in just Like a, a naturally second. occurring probiotic or prebiotic? No, no, or no, 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 no. It's, um, what the heck is it? It's, uh, I talk about this all the time and I just, I just went completely, I had a brain freeze. Um, I know but you've covered so much. It's, it's, it's understandable. I, I covered so much in a, <laughs> a period of time. You know, that's why people really should probably read my books or go to my website or, you know, whatever. We want, we that's want why to I've been sharing it the whole episode. There's so much. We, we want to bring this to the world. We want to make the world aware of this because um, somebody has to do it. We're not here to convince people. We're not here to sell them anything. You, you notice I'm giving people a generic recipe. Yeah, this I appreciate that because, again, to our not, listeners. It's not my recipe. Yeah. This is what I was taught by Dr. Ruggiero and by the geneticists and the molecular, the people that I've worked with around the world that I have, that I have, that I've worked with. Um, oh, casein. Casein. There we go. There we go. Okay. Watch this. By allowing that shake to sit for 40 minutes and Dr. Ruggiero did an analysis with an electron microscope. He showed this, sh the sh all the shakes at five minutes had mat. It looked like the, the surface of the moon, all these ridges and craters. Yeah, 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 the, the porous looking. The porous look, right. Yeah. 40 minutes later, took a second picture. <laughs> Those caseins were completely gone. They were oh, actually- So it still did it, but then- They're gone. Reabsorbed or- No, they're, they're gone. they were used in the chemical transformation of the shake. They're completely oh. gone. They're no longer there. They're 100% eliminated. Meaning, so casein was there and then it's gone. Well, because it, the, 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 the enzymes worked on breaking it down. They broke and it down. I mean, this You're is like- my mind right now. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I remember I told you before we started off the air, I said, I promise that you've never heard anything like this from I'm, due respect to all your guests. Yeah. Because unless they studied with the people I studied with, this is not being taught at Harvard or Yale or Princeton yet. No. This is brand new science, although, you know, I've been doing it for 15 years. Oh, no, no, no offense. I just I've don't really. Of, I've had a lot of critics along the way. And I always said, you know, your opinion to me is none of my business. Yep. So people listen to this, they can say, oh, this guy's, he's full of it. Really? But I have in the end, it works. evidence to back it up over 15 years. I've probably spoken in front of three or 400,000 people. I think on YouTube and Google, I've got like a million hits on my name. Well, you don't have to take a position. You don't have I'm to take sorry. a position. You don't have to take a position on this, but through other researchers I've discussed with lately, they've all agreed that unfortunately there's a lot of Harvard studies that come out now that are just not backed by anything, and it's unfortunate. It's actually impacting their long respected name, but people still hear Harvard and they think it's okay. And you don't have to take a position up. That's just what I've been getting, and it's a yeah. shame. So. But I don't. I, I don't need necessarily need the the studies when I no. see a guy in Denver who five foot eight. He started at 587 pounds and he lost 387 pounds in 22 months with no loose skin and no surgery. That's, that's pretty good evidence for me. I and still try and explain it to people about the whole skin thing. They don't get well, it. Because the fat is eviscerated, meaning it's completely gone. And in its place, we're building lean muscle mass, but also collagen. And, and what happens on diets, remember, you lose muscle. So obviously, you're going to have all that loose skin. There's nothing to support it. Hmm. But you're also losing collagen and all that kind of stuff. And okay. what happens? Athletes, when they do this, especially now letting the shakes sit, they can work out literally seven days a week. They have recovery. They're not sore the next day. It's insane what happens because obviously what else does the detox process do? Removes lactic acid. When you're doing your CrossFit, what slows you down is when the lactic acid builds up. Eventually, you have to stop. Well, here's the best part. So my fiance and I are training for a big CrossFit competition in Philadelphia later this month. There are six-person teams. It's called the Extreme Box Challenge. So yeah, I'm very familiar with um, – I know all about CrossFit. My, yeah. my, my personal trainer, 28 years old, who's been on this protocol, but most importantly, he went on letting the shake sit about six months ago. He just placed in the 1% in the open um, – uh, CrossFit games in the entire world out of five. I feel like you're giving me a hack. I mean, I feel like, wait, well, yeah, what? 
You're blowing my mind right now because I'm just telling you what's going on. Because my fiance, she wanted me to get her. She's like, "Hey, go find me some BCAs." I'm like, "I already have access to BCAs." I was like, "It's perfect." And she's like, "Yeah, but you do." She said, "She said I can't drink." She says she can't drink these shakes that you and I are discussing between because like in a competition you're doing multiple workouts right over 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 the day. So she's like, in between the shakes are just too heavy for her. And I said. Not if you let them sit. It completely changes uh, everything about it. See, this and is what I'm so excited about. Because, because you're getting 90% of the BCAAs, right? So whatever you know, you're doing, whatever you're doing, you're getting you're getting 15% if it's a shake. So with, with, with the water temperature, I'm, I, ha- I have to get this out of you because our listeners, if, they're, if, they're, if they're, you're geeking as much as I am, is it do, room temperature? You can, do, you can do room temperature work also, but 100 degrees is ideal. But you can definitely do room temperature. I'll okay. tell you another thing you can do. Tonight, you could make a shake in warm water, let it sit, yeah. re-blend it, put it in the refrigerator, and you can drink it the next morning. They're good for – the chemical reaction's over, and it'll stay – you know, if, as long as you drink it within 12 to 14 hours, you're fine. What about, um, what about that? Uh, it, it, some shakes, when they, get, they sit too long, they get a smell. What, what's that all about? Is well, that part of the reaction? Or is well, that because they were, extre- they were exposed to too much sunlight? Activate, or didn't activate the enzymes. Ah. So the enzymes basically were, were useless. <laughs> so, we, oh my God, you, you're just, you have blown my mind. So, well, because I, just, I'm like, you know, I like, I can't wait. I can't wait to I test this. this value here for your listeners. And yes. they, you know, I'm just saying to you listeners, what I laid out for you, I gave you the ingredients, but if you want, because TDOS syndrome and TDOS solutions, we're in Barnes and Noble on the shelf, which is a huge deal in an Amazon world today. But they can also get it on Amazon, you know, et cetera. Oh, I'm on there right now. There you go. You go through the whole, <clears throat> yeah, there's the Tito syndrome right there. Yep. And you have two different book covers, I notice. Hold on. Well, no, there's two different books. This well, is you a, have the solutions. No, that was, an, that was an older version. Oh, okay. That's an older version, but it's solutions. Yeah. Um, there should be, a, I know it's up there somewhere, the solution. But when you're well, the solution, one from your website right here. This yeah, one. there's syndrome. Syndrome and solutions. Oh, is that a yeah. combo? No, there's two different books. That, that was the old book where we had them both together. Then my publisher wanted me to rewrite and do two separate books. So right. that people Which this is the, the solutions. Book. Yeah. And then this is the syndrome separate. Right? Well, that's solutions there. There's a different cover. I don't know what part of uh, Amazon you're looking at. I just brought you up by your name. Yeah, just call me up on my name. It's fine. Yeah, you know? I, I, so that's why. Because like right and, there is. And, and, and again, I think that you know, you probably will get some feedback from this call because I know it's very, I've been doing it for 15 years. I know it's really controversial, (laughs) except what I'm telling you is that we have the science and results to back it up. And I've got world-class, you know, my co-author on your third brain, that book, who is the one that did this analysis with no, he has no, he has no game. He has no, no, no dog in this hunt. Right. Yeah. So anyway, it's, it's just, you know, interesting. And well, now, now I'm going to stalk no, Marco Ruggiero too. I'm sorry, Ruggiero, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to, st- I'm obviously already stalking you. Now I'm going to stalk now him. that book, <laughs> notice the title, that's real. We do have a third brain. I don't have enough time. If you wanted me to come back on and go through I that book, would totally welcome you back on because that's a whole different, we well, talk I, a lot about mindset on this show, so. No, it's not, no, it's not what you think. I know, it's, it's different than that. Unequivocally, it is an organ that got discovered in 2011 that weighs twice as much as the liver that's gone undetected in human anatomy since the beginning of time. That's your third brain. Wow. We were, that's reviewed, crazy. are you familiar with the Townsend letter? It's like yeah, I've heard of it. I've not actually re- uh, read Goes it though. To every physician in North America. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a scientific journal. Okay. Now, this is not self-serving because you, you can look this up, all right? I'm, man, I'm all about facts. And if people want to Google me, I'm, I'm good. But your third brain got reviewed by the Townsend Letter, which has been around for more than 40 years. Their words, not mine. They said, in our 40 years, this is the greatest book that we've ever reviewed and these guys are going to change the world. That's all I'll tell you. Oh, they reviewed your book. They reviewed our book. The Townsend Letter did. Completely independent. I mean, it, gave, it immediately gave us such prestige in the world. It's unbel- We just got our book translated. Well, into- you're not yeah. making this up because thanks to the power of Google, there's yeah. the Townsend Letter. So, okay. and right you here, they're mentioning. Google Peter Greenlaw or Marco Ruggiero. You can, some, there's some way to search past articles. Or okay. Review- yeah, yeah, well, I found it on oh, Google just because. Sure. There he is right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hold on, let me bring that back up here. Google wasn't fast enough. Because uh, did, did they do that in 16 or 2017? Uh, the review was in 2017. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. 
PhD in molecular biology, mm-hmm. diagnostic radiology. Yep. Wow. He's a genius. He was a lieutenant but, medical you know, officer in the most, army. And, and with all due respect, probably to some of your guests, I would venture an opinion that any of them you had on, if they've done more than 10 or 20 papers published in significant medical journals, that, that's a pretty good accomplishment. He's yeah. done 210. 210. In 30 wow. years. And like I said, two of his papers are in the top, listen to this, 5% of all, see there the, Jake, see what he's saying? Yeah. Read it right there. There's the, there's the review. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and so what I'm saying to you is that two of his papers are in the top 5% of all medical papers ever published, ever in history. And he's the guy that did the net protein utilization. I kind of trust him. Yeah, I would I mean, again, this is a great, because again, people talk about third party studies or reviews, like you can't beat this one. It's a Townsend letter. I mean, come on. Right, exactly. <laughs> You're not making this up. I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save the link to this because when we do the blog show notes for your episode, I want to make sure this is one of the supported links in there. Yeah, so please do. I'm going to save that because I love, I'm the same way with you. Like that's the other thing. Like, after we're done with the show today, like if there's any other supporting links that you feel are going to be valuable because uh, backlinks to your site. Well, I always backlink yeah, everything. What I'll so. do, I'll send you. We're just developing on the Greenlaw report. We've just um, let me show that again. So much demand. We're 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 creating a whole list of blogged articles that we're doing. Our goal is to do fifty a week. Plus, we're going to post um, eight. We're, we're we're creating a series from my television show of eight and ten minute shows series um, with like Dr. Ruggiero, like with John Gray, like with um, Dr. Ruggiero. Yeah. That we're that you'll have access to, but they're only eight or 10 minutes long. And the point is that you'll be in a position. Oh, see, there's the, yeah. That, see, that's the new cover. I didn't see that on Amazon. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know, but that's the correct cover right there. There we go. So I'm going to make sure I link this too, because this is important. So if you can find the right books. So yeah, those are the right books. Yeah. I'm well, anyway, this. I, uh, I, I, I have another, I actually have another call that I, need I to was going to say, we went really long tonight. Been, <laughs> well, I'm sorry that I was so. Long. Oh no, you're fine. <laughs> I'm happy to go along when I have experts or people who have done the expert reviews like you've done. I'm well, loving remember, this. I'm not the expert. I'm the expert on the experts. And everything I shared with the listeners tonight is from those geniuses. Not just Dr. Ruggiero, by the way, but geneticists. And, you know, we could do a whole show. You talk about, maybe we'll do a couple more. One of the things that I'm the most um, grounded in is that aging is not a condition. It's a disease. It's no different than the flu. Ooh. We can do a whole show on that if you want. Ooh. Those are some good right. key words for a my, title. My good friend is the geneticist that discovered the enzyme that causes aging. That might be a pretty good show to do, right? That would be very good. Well, one thing I like about you is that, and, I, and I'm all about bringing the actual experts on too. That's why I love I loved talking to scientists and everything else too, but you get it. Like you're able to translate. I think that's the most important thing is translate and you, and you have the passion. That's why... Uh, when, when Glenn told me about you, I was like, does he have a lot of energy? And he said, um, I'll let you see that for yourself because usually I'm the crazy guy. And, I'm so uh, passionate about it because I've seen the results over 15 years and hundreds of thousands of people whose lives have been changed who have come to my lectures. Or now it's getting much bigger because they're finding me on YouTube. And you know, What if now- nothing else? Because mm-hmm. again, as a little hint to our listeners, I have been following the protocols you've been discussing about today for a few years. You've just reinforced what I found years ago. Before? Wait till you start letting the shakes sit. I, well, I know you just, I, I can't wait. I'm going to play with that tonight. <laughs> I'm very excited, well, especially when you me, told me. You know, get back, you know, email me and let me know. You know, you, you'll notice in three or four days. I mean, you'll, it's just that fast. It's unbelievable. Well, and the best thing I want to teach that to is my fiance because she only drinks half of one of those shakes. She said it's too heavy. No, so no, it's no, like, no. So if I do this ahead of time and yeah, then works. refrigerate it so it's ready for her the next day, that might be the hack. Well, one last thing that I'll tell you that I didn't share yet. Um, okay. When you let the shakes sit in his analysis, he found that there are 300 new neuroprotective molecules that did not exist in the first five minutes. Because you let the enzymes do their thing. And it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, and it, by, by the way, it uses the caseins to convert and create these, they're called neuroprotective molecules, 300 new ones, 300. Wow. That's crazy. Neuroprotective molecules. Yep. Neuro, any URL, neuroprotective molecules. 
I'll make it nicer in my, in my website. So. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm but just, when you I, read, I take notes during the show. So well, yeah. So I would encourage you to read my books and then you'll yes. have a whole new insight into this or your listeners can get it because everything, I mean, it's obviously very expanded in the books and I have all the scientific backup for everything that I'm talking about today. Have you launched any of these on audible yet for audio? No. Okay. That would be no. like my, as a marketer, I will tell you, yeah, I, I travel a lot. That would be the next phase. Dude, I'm, so, I'm, yeah. so, I'm so busy changing the world. It's like, I don't have time. I, <laughs> I know I'm throwing you an idea that you already know about, but it's like, I will tell you, I crush books on Audible because I travel so much. Yeah. Sitting down and well, reading is really, I really, really enjoyed this um, yeah. podcast. Thank you. Like I said, my goal is to help as many people as we possibly can. And, you know, I want to change the world by making them aware of what's available. And I know that we are going to be able to do this. Um, once we sell the television show, which will be weekly, an hour show, where I'm going to bring on these experts. I'm going to, you know, they're the ones that are going to talk about net protein utilization and genetics and all this kind of stuff. That's kind of the, the whole genesis behind the show. Normally, I usually ask you to give me some final words for our co host at the end of the show, but you just gave us your mission right then and there. So, well, listen, uh, give, give me two seconds. I'll give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, thegreenlawreport.com. Okay, you need to check it out. And obviously, check out Peter. I mean, Peter is changing the world thanks to these experts. He is the reviewer of all this stuff. And remember, why diets are failing us, your third brain, the TDOS syndrome, the TDOS solutions, all four books, Peter Greenlaw, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Peter, I'll say goodbye here in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to our Live the Fuel podcast show. We clearly are fueling your health and lifestyle tonight. So thanks for tuning in. And remember, you too can live the fuel. And you're clear of the podcast. This is just extra video content. So thank you again. I want to make sure I respect your schedule and let you get on your next call. So no, I just so did I deliver on my promise to blow. Uh, yeah, you did promised to blow my mind, and you definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> and you so just Glenn, again Glenn was right. <laughs> you gave me new ideas to play around with in the protocol that I've not had. I had no idea existed. And like you said, it's less than two years old. Science. Revolutionary new science. Revolution. So again, the, the quick timeline is if we're, if we're letting it warm up, how long? 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Then That's the magic. And then remix it and you can add ice if you want at that point. Okay. So I can remix it, throw it in the fridge. She can pull it out the next day. Okay. You have to remix it. Have to remix it. Okay. And because of that the, enzyme process. It the next morning. Absolutely. Another thing as far as workouts, one last thing I'll share with you. Mm -hmm. Here's the ideal way. What, what most of my, tra what I've trained them now they take a shaker bottle to their workout. They make their shake in warm water before the workout. Let it ferment. Now, here's the critical part. For the maximum benefit, the minute you're done or when you're even in your, 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 your stretching or you're warming up, you shake, you shake, drink it. You must drink it within five minutes after you've done your workout. You'll get massive results because that's the point where your body needs those amino acids to remake what you've just done in your workout, especially in something like CrossFit. It's so intense. that's a whole other episode because all these people are trying to debunk nutrient timing. Full of crit. They're they're full of it. But you have the research to back it up. I Absolutely. love it. Well, and I have the results. And you have the results. That's true. I have the results. And I will tell you when this airs, I already have a captive audience, a Facebook group that I started years ago called is a CrossFitter, but if you pronounce that differently, you know what I mean by that. There's well, over, over 4,000 people in there from all over the world, from New Zealand and Australia. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you access to our new library that we're creating at the Greenlaw Report. It's not, if you go to the greenlawreport.com, you won't see it, because of the way that Google posts, you have to do it as articles. So okay. I'll send you that link, where right now, I think there are 35 blogs but it's also going to be organic. It's going to, we're going to keep adding them. We're going to add, I think we've got 24 eight minute uh, uh, TV segments that are going to go up there in the next couple of days. So no, that, you, that's important for Google. You got to keep cycling new content. Well, yeah, we yeah. know that, but I'm yeah. saying for the listeners, that's the link you should really give them because that's where all the scientific evidence is going to be posted. That's perfect. I love that. Yeah. So we're just, uh, we're just actually launching it this week. So you talk about your timing. You're going to be at the front edge of the, of the front edge of the front edge. I'm, I'm excited that you and I finally got to sit down and well, uh, I'm standing, but standing desk, but you know, get all this done. I'm really excited about everything you're doing. This is awesome. And you are yes. definitely more than welcome to come back on uh, any I, kind of segment. Like I said, read the books because we probably should do one on your third brain and we probably should do one on, on aging and genetics. And we also could probably do a follow up, you know, in a few weeks or a month after you've actually been laying in the shakes, sit, et cetera. And, you know, just, we can, we can 
have part of the show on that and then we can do you know once you read my books you'll have you'll you'll see you got a lot more no this is perfect timing because i literally have um i'm finishing a challenge right Right. now so i have my i have a couple of nutritional fasting well switch over switch over let the shake sit starting tonight trust me got it all right. And I'll, I'll be ordering these books immediately. So because okay. I actually, I've been building my own fuel library on livethefuel.com and, and that's all, s- it's all backlinking into Amazon. So I'll be able to connect all this. So. And I'm going to send you this link. I'm going to send you the link to the, to the new, to our new library. Okay. And then okay. for this episode, normally I just figure out the keywords myself, but is there keywords you'd like to see me included in the title? Well, certainly um, the enemy is not, ca- the enemy is not calories, it's toxins. Okay. Food- Food will never be enough again. And instead of counting calories, you need to make every calorie count. Those I'd say would be the three big headlines. So really, I mean, again, blogging, you only get so much in the title, but definitely keywords of calories and toxins should definitely be included. So I love yeah, that. Fine. And fine. yeah. Cause that's, All right. that's awesome. All right. Well, thanks. This has been great. We'll, uh, I'll, be, I'll be anxious to see what you think of the books when you read them. Okay. Oh, I'll be ordering. All right, Scott. <laughs> thanks a million. Have a great night, sir. Bye. Take care.